السلام عليكم ورحمة الله second year medical students welcome to your academic English course module 3 this is Dr. Amal Abdel Fattah assistant professor of tropical medicine speaking to you and the lecture is about unit 7 in your reading and writing book which is about discovery and invention the learning objectives in this unit are you have to watch and understand a video about uh, ASIMU robot and read scales reading scales uh, scan to predict the content Uh, how to do how to scan the article before you read it in the academic writing skill edit for common errors and your writing task is write an advantage disadvantage essay uh, again i remind you to you uh, that uh, some uh, of this uh, uh, the exercises in this unit have to be uh, solved with a partner uh, to be able to go through the discussion please uh, find uh, a partner or two uh, to help you maximize the benefit from uh, this uh, lecture and uh, go through the discussions and improve your speaking skills and please never uh, forget uh, safety uh, guidelines and never forget the uh, social distancing and uh, don't forget to wear your masks while you sit together as uh, partners um, now discuss with your friends uh, work with a partner and discuss these questions what do you think will happen in the world of science and technology in the next 10 years what do you think will be uh, happening what do you think uh, uh, is going to be invented what do you think do you think there will be a big change in the next 10 years Uh, match the new technologies one to three to the definitions robotics uh, science of making and using robots that's C 3d printing making plastic objects by printing designs on a computer yes biomimicry it's a study of biology in order to copy nature and solve human problems yes this is it uh, I want you uh, to um, Uh, think of the past 20 years and uh, write down uh, three of the most important inventions that were not there before these 20 years. Uh, the first thing that comes uh, to your mind and you, we will have a discussion about it later. Uh, if I want to think of an invention that has made a big change in life as we know it uh, in the past uh, years, in the past 20 years, that was the not there before that I will think of smartphones uh, Android systems and smartphones and the revolution this made to our communication it even changed the way we study the way we work and the way we support each other in bad times in the way we relate to people the way we have our relations uh, all these applications that were invented to work on your smartphones that help you communicate to find your way and help you um, know the time and the weather made big changes in our life made our life easier I think and made it more fast um, made it faster and um, uh, this is uh, the, the the ultimate invention I think that made a marvelous change in our lives in the past few years uh, what else can you think of Uh, can you think of other inventions that made that big change? Uh, that question is left to you. Uh, these uh, these informations are meant to unlock your knowledge about discoveries and inventions in the world, so that you may you will proceed with uh, the uh, information in the uh, videos and in the readings that are uh, going to come up in this lecture. Actually, um, I myself cannot imagine what really will be invented in the next uh, 10 years. Uh, maybe smart devices that spies on smart a smart device that spies on people's thoughts or dreams. Uh, maybe in the next 10 years. I guess. Um, I guess actually some of our browsers uh, actually spy uh, on your thoughts sometimes. I'm astonished with this ability that um, your browsers, your internet browsers, can sometimes detect what interests you before you are um, without even without you even saying that. So I guess uh, the next um, astonishing um, device will be a smart device that spies on your dreams. Uh, you about to watch a video about a special robot. 
I want you to look at these pictures and predict the content of the video. What do you think are the jobs this robot can uh, uh, perform? And uh, uh, what uh, uh, can you think of any jobs there that robots will do in the future? Uh, this is um, a way of using these uh, provided pictures. Look at these pictures and try to predict the content of the video. If you look at the pictures, you will notice that robots are used in many different ways. They do surgeries in hospitals, they are used in mining, in car factories, in space, uh, discoveries, uh, and sometimes in house chores like vacuuming carpets, uh, in firefighting, uh, to search for dangerous buildings. Uh, these are the different ways that are seen in the pictures. And in the future, I guess there will be lots of pilotless plans, driverless, car, driverless cars in the military, in the house, as help for elderly people, uh, people with disabilities who need, who need uh, uh, people to look after them. Uh, and so, so I guess uh, robots, uh, that's what we can see in the picture. And so you can predict that this is about the uses of the robots in your life. Uh, this is uh, what the video is going to talk about. This as um, uh, this is the uh, prediction of what the video is going to talk about. Now this exercise is um, aims at um, uh, helping you to understanding the key vocabulary before you watch the video, so you can understand the video better. Uh, the books here have uh, some words that you will have to match to the definitions in the sentences below. Um, mobility aid gesture, center of gravity, uneven, disability, humanoid. Something that looks like a human is, of course, humanoid, it looks like a human. And surface is not flat, an uneven, uneven surface is not flat. The point is an object, the point in an object where its weight is balanced is its center of gravity. The weight is balanced around the center of gravity. Something that helps you move is a mobility aid, a serious and long-term physical and mental problem that has a negative effect on your daily life is a disability, a serious and long-term physical and mental problem that's a disability, um, is a movement of your hands, arms and head to express an idea or feeling that's a gesture. Let's check the answers again. Humanoid, uneven, center of gravity, mobility, aid, disability, and gestures. Gesture, if you understand uh, this uh, vocabulary, this key vocabulary, you will be able to understand the video. And now I want you to start watching the video and number the main ideas in order in the order that you hear them. Uh, uh, to get the main idea or uh, the main ideas of different parts of the uh, video, I want you to focus on the first thing the speaker says after pauses. The speaker says um, a, a sentence in the beginning of, uh, of, uh, of his speech and after each pause. Uh, that expresses the main idea of what he's going to say in this uh, part of the video. So uh, focus on that and try to number the main ideas. Uh, here are the correct answers. Uh, first, a D, what robots can do. C, background and history of ASIMO. Uh, e. Recent improvements uh, to ASIMO. Uh, A. Uses of ASIMO. Then B. What robots would be able to do in the future. Uh, here are uh, the main ideas with the correct um, uh, order. If you uh, find something wrong with your answers, please watch the video again. Try to correct it. Okay, here's a list of what uh, ASIMO robot can do now and things that uh, ASIMO robot will be, uh, is expected to be able to do in the future according to the improvements. Uh, uh, can it uh, play football, balance on one foot, jump, walk on uneven surfaces, make tea, push a cart, open and close doors, shake hands, run downstairs, speak English, open the portal. What do you think according to the video or the activities that ASIMO can do? Play football, balance on one foot, yes, walk on uneven surfaces, push a cart, open and close doors, 
and shake hands no no running downstairs no speaking english no opening bottles no jumping uh, no making tea and now let's check the answers yes can play football can walk can balance on one foot can four can uh, push cards can shake hands can uh, walk on uneven surfaces can um, open and close doors watch the video again and complete the sentences as you watch uh, the video in a note-taking manner in 1986 the honda automotive company wanted to create a humanoid it took years to make asimo on uneven surfaces asimo can run at how fast can he run asimo is how tall is the robot asimo can hold up to how many kilograms the researchers are working on robots that can respond to touch and okay you have to watch the video again and try to fill uh, these spaces uh, and um, uh, i'll check and and after that we will check the answers okay that's the answers robot walk is six kilometers hour 120 centimeters two kilograms and can respond to voice so uh, this is an exercise about making an inferences making inferences uh, so these informations were not mentioned directly in the uh, video and you have to work with your partner to answer them why do you think asimo uh, was designed to have a humanoid shape why was asimo designed to be smaller than a human rather than a same size or taller what are the descendant of this robot which are mentioned in the video um, uh, try to work it out with your partner uh, here are some possible answers uh, Asimo was designed as a humanoid to make people react to it as though it were human uh, that's a possible answer uh, maybe uh, to decrease the fear uh, uh, that's associated with robots maybe to make children less afraid of it uh, it's made also um, uh, shorter uh, than humans um, to make uh to make people be less afraid of it make children be less afraid of it uh, because sometimes you may feel uh, if it if it's a huge thing or a powerful thing you may be afraid of it uh, and it, uh, and you may think it might be able to hurt you so it's designed uh, to look in the eyes of people who are seated if you are sitting down so if he is serving a uh, uh, a geriatric who is uh, uh, immobile and sitting on a chair all the time uh, he will be able to make uh, it will be able to make an eye contact with it with him uh, uh, that's the idea of creating asimo to be humanoid to make him more liable more likable and um, less fearful to humans uh, and of course uh, the other generation the new generation the descendants of asimo will have more uh, reactivity to voices more activity to languages uh, more activity to touches um, that uh, more sensitivity to objects uh, they can identify objects uh, from the pictures from the pictures um, so uh, the upcoming generations will have more options and will have uh, like advanced options uh, than just move and carry things and give you stuff and they will be less under uh, they can act uh, automatically without uh, need for uh, human control the, there will be less human control on them uh, based on what's mentioned on the video again try to work with your partner and discuss these questions what are the advantages and disadvantages of using robots to do our housework for us what are the three most important inventions in the house and why which three inventions would you like to see in your home in the future here are some ideas to help you with the discussion 
Of course, uh, using robots to do your housework can uh, ensure that your house is uh, uh, cleaned regularly and uh, have lots of advantages like saving time and saving effort. But of course, if you get used to that, you can get lazy and fat. That's a, a big disadvantage. If you do not clean your house yourself, you can become very lazy and sometimes robots are actually uh, devices so they can uh, can break down they can have viruses in that artificial intelligence so uh, they can miss up lots of things uh, there are lots of important inventions in your house if you if you can count there are lots of them computers and freezers and central heating and air conditioners and showers and you know um, hair dryers uh, and uh, lots of things uh, can uh, can uh, land lines and televisions and computers and radios and uh, ovens and whatever. There are lots of inventions in our house. Um, uh, there are lots of ideas also. What do you think that the third question is about an invention that you want to see um, in your house uh, maybe in the next 20 years? Uh, what uh, is the invention? Here there are lots of ideas that's written in uh, uh, here in this slide, uh, maybe a cleaner that does the stairs, a robot that's capable of soothing babies at night, uh, a robot that's capable of dealing with email, a computer that can do what you think of. Maybe for myself, I think of a coffee maker and a, an alarm clock in one. An alarm clock that uh, wakes me up to my coffee, that makes coffee for me and wakes me up to my coffee. Uh, that's uh, an invention that I want to see and a book that emits light they told me uh, that Kindle can do that a Kindle tablet can do that but I want to see a book that emits light so I can read in the dark without having to turn uh, or read it uh, before bed I read in bed without having to turn the lights all on uh, that's an invention that I want to see in my house uh, about you uh, what are the inventions that you want to see uh, in your house uh, maybe an invention that listens to the lecture and takes notes and uh, maybe an invention that give you alerts whenever a lecture is ready for you to listen to um, what are uh, the inventions that you want to see now let's move to reading one uh, before you need, I need you to use your knowledge to predict the content. The prefix bio means life. What words do you know that start with bio? Uh, read the first paragraph of the article in page 127 opposite. What do mimicry and biomimicry mean? Mimicry. Mimicry means to imitate something, to create something that's similar to other things. Mimicry means imitation. Biomimicry means imitation of life. That's a creation that looks like life, looks like nature. Can you think of man-made objects that could be something in nature? Lots of things actually. Could be something in nature. It's eagle eye, maybe. Okay, let's check your answers. Biology, biography, biofuel, bionics, biodegradable. These are words that, examples of words that begin with the suffix bio. Mimicry means copying something or imitating something. Biomimicry means imitating life or copying life. Uh, the first, uh, the most famous example of things copying uh, nature is wing shape of the early planes. Uh, that came from the study of bird wings and wings in uh, flight. Now skim the article in page 127 and answer the questions below. Which product are mentioned in the products are mentioned in the article? Uh, which plants or animals were copied to produce these products? Uh, and you know what skimming means? It's reading the first sentence of uh, of every paragraph. Now check your answers. Velcro fasteners, speed fast skin, speedo fast skin, 
swimming suits, speed of fast skin swimming suits, eagle eyes, sunglasses, Mercedes Benz Bionic cars, um, uh, the Velcro uh, fasteners are uh, mimic the b uh, burdock seeds, uh, speed of fast skin swimming suits mimic the skin of sharks, uh, eagle eyes, sunglasses of course uh, copy the eagles and falcons eyes and Mercedes Benz Bionic cars are uh, similar to t uh, tropical box fish. And now read uh, the article in details and find the answers to these questions. Where was Georges de Mestral from? Uh, which two features uh, does uh, Velcro have that allows it to stick together? Uh, what does the shark skin allow a shark to do? Uh, what does the shark skin do to bacteria? Uh, whose eyes did NASA want to protect from dangerous radiation? What special feature of eagle eye was copied to make sunglasses? Which two feature of a box skeleton, boxfish skeleton, make it good for engineers to copy? What does the car copy that allows it to save fuel? Now check your answers. George de Mestre was in Switzerland, and the Velcro have hooks and loops to make it stick together and um, the shark skin have the shark swim faster it stops but and it also stops bacteria from growing and uh, uh, the ones who are uh, uh, for for whom uh, the uh, the eagle eye was created are the astronauts to protect their eyes from dangerous radiations uh, the yellow oil in the eye is the um, the character of the eagle eye that was copied um, the uh, bionic, uh, the Mercedes-Benz Bionic car copies uh, the tropical uh, fish, box fish, uh, uh, copies the, the, the skeleton, the strength of the skeleton and the lightweight of that skeleton and of course it copies the smooth shape of uh, the box fish uh, that makes it less air, more, um, uh, that makes it less air resistant and burn less fuel. Now that's the part uh, that you make inferences. Uh, this um, uh, uh, information is not. This information is not mentioned in the in the text. Uh, but uh, you can infer them. You can um, understand them from analysis of uh, of the text. Why do you think Velcro became popular with the children's clothing companies? Uh, why do you think that Speedo Fast Skin swimsuit was controversial during the, the Beijing Olympics? Why do people have different opinions about the bionic car? Uh, some children have difficulty doing up uh, their clothes so uh, that was uh, popular, that helped them fasten their clothes quickly and easily and uh, uh, that uh, that was quite uh, uh, a challenging thing to teach a child to do to uh, close his, uh, his uh, clothes to close his clothes uh, quickly. Uh, that's uh, that's why it was popular in children clothes. The speed of fast skin give advantages to some uh, advantage to some swimmers over the competitors, so they were controversial in the Beijing uh, Beijing Olympics. Uh, some people prefer cars that are more traditional and attractive in shape and the bionic car, Mercedes Benz bionic car was not that attractive. Okay, now work with your partner and discuss this. Do you think that biomimicry will be more common in the future? Why or why not? What are the advantages of copying nature? The more you learn about uh, the living uh, things and the living animals and plants, the more you uh, get fascinated by the abilities that ha they have, uh, the abilities God created them uh, to adapt to their environment, and the, the, the marvelous abilities. Um, whenever you find an ability in a plant or an animal that can make your life easier, you would get envious and you would, to, would want to copy it. Yes, I think that biomimicry will increase and become more common in the future, and it will make our our life uh, easier uh, every time you do this uh, you will feel like you have made a, a great discovery and the more you imitate of nature the easier life will get 
Now let's move to reading two. Now scan the article in page 129, uh, that's reading two. Uh, scanning is all about speed, so you have to glance with your eye around the article so quickly that you find these three words and mention the paragraph that they are in. Robot suit, flying car, 3D printer. Robot suit, flying car, 3D printer. So please go find them as quickly as you can. And the first one who gets it is a winner. Okay, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Uh, one is D, is found in paragraph D. Uh, two in B and three in C. Uh, how, how did you find your scanning? Was it easy? It's the easiest skill. Uh, of or as the easiest scale among the reading scales, it help you find specific pieces of information quickly. Uh, another thing that you'll have to do quickly, uh, you will have to skim the article and um, match the inventions one to three: flying cars, 3D printers, a robot suit, uh, to their advantages uh, A, C, and their disadvantages uh, from uh, one to three uh, to, uh, to three okay flying cars 3d printers printing a robot suit it could help people walk again we could avoid speeding tickets we could make our own plastic products mechanical failure might be a big problem the main disadvantage is cost the process is slow and expensive one flying cars we can avoid speeding tickets that's p and uh, the mechanical failure might be a big problem. Uh, 3D printing, it could help. Uh, it, it, we can make our own plastic products. The process is slow and the material is expensive. Uh, and uh, a robot suit uh, can help people walk again. And the main disadvantage is uh, the cost. Now check your answers. If you found them incorrect, try to skim the article again and try to make sure of your answers. Now uh, read uh, this uh, the article in details and try to uh, cor uh, tr uh, try to write true or false uh, and it doesn't say uh, next to the statements below. Flying cars will allow us to avoid traffic congestion on the roads. A mechanical failure will not be much of a problem for flying cars. Uh, we might be able to print things like necklaces or chairs in the future. 3D printing was invented in 1984. Uh, BMW and Volkswagen are going to use 3D printing soon. Robots, robot suits are heavy objects. Uh, the battery life of a robot suit is short at the moment. Now check your answers. Uh, true, we could fly at 100, uh, 480 km per hour avoiding traffic lights, busy roads and speeding tickets. False is another uh, big problem is mechanical failure. True, in the future we could make our own furniture, jewelry and cups and plates. Uh, for it doesn't say uh, anything about that. Uh, false, B uh, BMW and Volks Volkswagen already use 3D printers to make life-size models of car parts uh, uh, six it doesn't say anything about that uh, seven uh, true batteries are only last about 15 minutes at the moment that's a very short time and uh, now make inferences work with your partner uh, to answer this question why is mechanical failure a problem in flying cars uh, why will flying cars cause more traffic congestion, uh, uh, not less? Uh, what do you think could be the benefits of robot suits? Why wouldn't you want a robot suit arm to bend the wrong way? Uh, if flying cars break down, it might fall from the sky, and falling from the skies means death. So it's not like an ordinary car accident. Uh, that um, maybe possibly can uh, uh, survive it. This is uh, uh, a zero survival percentage. You cannot survive this. Flying cars can cause congestion in the sky as well. If we all go like 
uh, up in the sky, the sky will be crowded with cars. Uh, robot suits could help you disabled people move about uh, more easily. Uh, they could help people walk long distances and be stronger. Uh, so they can also enable soldiers to carry heavy weapons and equipments. Uh, and a robot suit arm can be bending on the wrong way can end up breaking your arm or your leg. So uh, this is not a, a thing that can be um, a heavy robot uh, uh, that uh, the robot suit uh, can, if it bends the wrong way it will break your arm or leg and injure uh, instead of help you um, uh, that robot suit reminds me kinds of reminds me of uh, with the Iron Man if you know what I mean uh, the Iron Man uh, that's a suit that makes you um, a so suddenly a superhero if you put it on it will be a superhero you can fly and you can carry heavy objects you can have a destructive uh, fist and whatever so it makes you like a side kind of a cyborg or an iron man um, a superhero uh, suddenly uh, walk in pairs and answer these questions do you think these inventions are a good idea why why not choose one of the inventions what would you do if you owned one uh, that's an invention that i would like a 3d printer uh, actually, uh, this is something that uh, I would uh, enjoy in my house. Maybe turn my uh, my children's um, uh, drawings into uh, actual toys. Uh, only if the material was uh, less expensive and um, less time consuming, and the process was less time consuming. Uh, but actually, uh, this can help me a lot. This can make me uh, make to lots of toys for my kids. If they drew a bear or something, I will try to and paint it. Uh, I will try to uh, give it to the, the 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 machine, and it will okay make it um, make the toy, a three D plastic toy, and uh, that will be something that will enjoy at home. Um, do you think these uh, this kind of invention? I actually found it on the internet. It's available, but at, at a high price, so I can buy one if I want, if I want to. Um, sometimes I think of the, the that uh, suit, that robot suit, as an Iron Man suit. It makes you see better and act better and be stronger and fly sometimes. That's the thing. Do you think that's going to be a good invention, a good something to have, or what? A flying car? Uh, since we watched the movie uh, Herbie, the flying car, uh, we all had that dream of a flying car uh, since we seen uh, the, the boy fly with his bicycle uh, to the moon in the movie ET we all all of us dreamed uh, of this having a, a vehicle that can fly um, uh, but sometimes some of us can feel intimidated with the feel of the flying so what do you think now let's move to the language development uh, making predictions means that you are saying that something may or may not happen in the future. So uh, there are so many uh, ways of saying that uh, you are predicting that this thing will happen in the future. Uh, the way you use a verb, which is uh, before the main verb, which is a modal verb, that the modal verb is not used alone. It has to be used with other verbs to express possibilities and abilities and like that. Uh, the modal verb will, could, sometimes may, might, uh, these are the verbs, and followed by an adverb, definitely, probably, possibly, uh, so these are the, the adverbs uh, that follow that, so use a, a modal verb, an adverb before the uh, uh, main verb of the sentence, so if you want to say that cars will become uh, more efficient in the future you say that they will definitely become more efficient in the future if you are 90 percent uh, certain if you are 73 percent certain the next generation will probably use more digital devices will probably 50 percent could possibly see humans walking on more soon 30 percent probability so uh, in the um, negative uh, forms the adverbs uh, becomes first comes first the adverb comes first probably won't not won't probably will definitely probably won't will probably and in the negative voice in the negative form probably won't 
definitely want that if for zero possibilities and you can also use might uh, for uh, seventy percent, fifty percent, we might see humans working more soon and going to a plus infinitive or plus present continuous. Like we will, we are going to be, to be seeing. We are going to be seeing uh, humans walking on Mars soon. We are going. Uh, cars are going to become more efficient. Are going to. Uh, become more efficient that's an infinitive might be um, the next generation might be using more digital that's a present continuous so if you want to use both infinitive and present continuous form following the modal verb so if the present continuous form follow the modal verb you will have to uh, use the uh, infinitive be uh, following the uh, like will probably be using more digital uh, devices that's the present continuous form or will probably use more digital devices now let's try, try to solve this uh, one together in years to come biofuels become more important in years to come biofuels will uh, probably won't become more important uh, because there are replacements for them uh, that's how I see it. Probably won't, or uh, probably, uh, uh, probably won't become more important. Or could possibly become more important. Um, that's up between 50 to 30 uh, percent probability. Genetic modification be very controversial before the decade is out. Will probably be very controversial before the decade is out. In the near future, electronic human implants become commonplace, might become commonplace, or could possibly become commonplace. Uh, biomimicry be a growth industry before too long, is going to be a growth industry, might be a growth industry, you can use could possibly will probably be a growth industry robotic cars be everyday product within the next 10 years uh, so robotic cars could possibly will uh, will probably be everyday product within the next 10 years now these are some um, possible answers actually well definitely they are not the, the actually correct answers uh, it depends about your opinion uh, your opinion on uh, the uh, so they are not the correct answers so he gives some will differently for the biofuels i think this is not correct actually they are losing the importance against the uh, um, renewable energy and probably won't could possibly will probably will probably uh, these are both possible answers they are not the correct answers remember that you answer according to what you really think now again look at the exercise one and underline the phrases that refer to the future time. They are in years to come, before the decade is out, in the near future, before too long, within the next 10 years. They are, these are the phrases uh, that uh, refer to the near future. The second point in the language development is understanding prefixes and prefixes if you remember as we said before they are uh, letters added to the beginning of the word to create a certain meaning all prefixes has a specific meaning and if they are added to the, they are added to the word they uh, make uh, another word here are some examples of uh, the prefixes auto means self automatic means moves uh, on itself d means reverse demotivate demotivate to uh, uh, remove the motive to suppress the motive this means reverse or remove disagree miss badly misuse misunderstand post after postmodern postmortem whatever pre before means prehistoric uh, re again rewrite sub under submerge on means remove or reverse on back on tidy under less than under cook uh, that's a language note about prefixes like anti which is the opposite 
co like together, x like outside, mid in the middle, none that's the reverse, none or uh, remove, uh, pre like before, post like after, pro, uh, uh, before, self like oh, uh, self, they are often separated from what follows it with a hyphen. Uh, sometimes uh, they uh, become uh, so common in writing that uh, there, uh, there is no hyphen anymore. Like postmodern, uh, this word it would use, was used to be written postmodern with a hyphen, but uh, if you write it so often and um, the word becomes, uh, when it's new, um, if it's uh, uh, written so often and used so often, uh, the, the words join each other and become uh, written as one. Uh, uh, other prefixes are often separated by hyphens to avoid unusual or confusing combinations of letters like re-evaluate uh, because there are not uh, to, to help you read them uh, correctly uh, because if I uh, put, uh, put it without the hyphen you will read it re-evaluate like a long E uh, but if you add a put here a hyphen that will help you read it correctly re-evaluate as two words uh, so that's with the hyphen, pre-intermediate. Uh, sometimes when they are, the words are new, they are hyphenated and then they first introduced to the language, they are hyphenated and then they become uh, less hyphenated. In medicine, we use these prefixes so, so many times. We use it a lot in our technical uh, uh, medical terminology and you must be common with lots of them. Uh, we have the infra, the supra, the intra, inter, and um, uh, extra and whatever. Uh, can you think of some prefixes that we use so often in medical terminology and write them down? Now let's read these sentences together. Each one has two sentences and if uh, I want to say if this has the same meaning or the opposite meaning. Flying cars are unsafe, flying cars are dangerous. Is it mean same or opposite? That's the same meaning. A discovery was made by post graduate means the the post graduate students post means after graduation discovery was made by students who haven't graduated from university yet no that's the opposite and the robots underperformed in their test the robots performed better than we expected under that's less so this means that they are the opposite we have to rethink the way we use technology we have to think again about how we use technology. That's the same meaning. Genetic engineering dehumanizes us. Genetic engineering makes us less human. Dehumanize to makes you to make you less human. That's to remove something. D to remove something. That's uh, the same meaning. People are often misunder often misunderstand new inventions. Often understand new inventions perfectly. Misunderstands means have uh, uh, don't understand or uh, misunderstand that's the opposite of understanding or wrong understanding so that's the opposite uh, the car flies uh, on autopilot uh, the car flies without a human pilot that's the same meaning autopilot means um, uh, say not by itself uh, the chip is inserted in subcutaneous layer of the skin is put under the skin subcutaneous means under the skin that's a medical term that's subcutaneous means that uh, it's put in the layer under the skin that's the same meaning check the answers thank you very much and good luck and best wishes from me dr amal abdel fatah